What's going on, hyperdrivers? Today I got another ship review for you guys. In the house today is the Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter that was featured in the Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian Season 3. This one was produced by MYC. And it's a pretty interesting ship for me. It's because never in my wildest dreams would I ever have imagined ever wanting to buy an N1 Starfighter. I was not a fan of this ship in the very first movie, in the, in the Phantom Menace. The ship was originally designed by Doug Chang for the Phantom Menace, and according to an interview I saw with him, they went through three dozen designs before they settled on the look for that yellow starfighter that Anakin would fly in at the end of the movie. And I, for one, did not like that ship. I just felt like it looked too new, it looked too clean, and it looked way too yellow. I just, I did not like all that yellow on that ship. So they wanted the ship to have more of an amphibious look because Naboo was covered in a lot of water. So that was the idea behind the design for that. And, you know, it, I, you know, back then I just had to like get in a different mindset for the Phantom Menace, right? It's a whole different era of Star Wars. You know, this was a royal security ship, you know, so obviously that would get a lot more love and attention than something, you know, like uh, X-Wing with the Rebellion, you know, where they're kind of just putting bolts and nuts on it just to get them up back in the air. These things were well-maintained ships. So yeah, they had to look new. That was meant to, that was meant to look that way. So, but it took me a while to get to that understanding of things. Now, fast forward to the Book of Boba Fett and when they introduced the N1 Starfighter as a replacement for the Razor Crest, I again was like, hell no. Hell no, I don't want this ship to be the replacement of the Razor Crest. I'm still not a fan of it being the replacement of the Razor Crest, but I think that's just a better looking ship in my opinion. But I did like what they thought and what they came up with for reintroducing the ship, making it a hot rod, making it something that was, you know, modified and customized and just meant to be more of a muscle car, you know, which I can dig. You know, this went from being a royal bougie fighter to being a muscle car, something with some tough engine power behind it which i was like yeah that's dope you know so when i got to see him flying it in, in that episode i was like this is pretty cool so it you know it, it, it grew on me so when myc decided that they were going to be making one of these and i got to see it in person i was like yep i'm gonna add that to the list so that's why this one is here right now and i think they did a great job on it this is a good looking ship it's a small ship it's one of the smallest models that myc has produced the ship itself is about 19 inches from nose to, to tail. The base is eight inches deep and about 13 inches long. And then you can get a maximum height of about eight and a half, nine inches, depending on how you angle the ship. Now, one of the things that I really love about this introduction, this introduction of the ship from MYC is it was the first one that they introduced that would have a ball swivel that was put inside of the of the ship itself. So you can actually angle this ship any which way you want to, to fit in your display or to make it look the way you want it to look. I like also that they put this ship on this museum base rather than having some kind of complex thing behind it because it just makes it very simplified and it really gives the attention just to the ship. The paint job on this looks fantastic. The sculpt looks fantastic. It looks just like the ship from the TV show. You have this more semi-gloss appearance to it, giving it the look of like stainless steel or aluminum finish to the overall uh, body panels on, on the ship. One of the things that I didn't really pay much attention to, I mean, I knew there was exposed areas on the ship, but what I didn't pay attention to in the film or in the TV show was that it's asymmetrical in its design. The exposed panels on this side engine, right side engine versus the left side engine are different. You know, same thing with like the exposed paneling on this side of the body versus the opposite side of the body. It's a little bit different on both sides, which makes it very interesting. Something that I think is a, is a much more improved enhancement over the original design of the ship back when the Phantom Menace first came out, because that one was very symmetrical. Everything looked, you know, very uniform in that design. So I think that's pretty cool. Also, the idea of it looking like a muscle car with all of the exposed engine areas is really, really neat. You know, having the exposed manifold at the very top is really awesome. I like that, got this heat weathered appearance to the back of the engines, which are really cool. And then the exposed parts all have like paint in there that looks like bronze and brown and chrome and to give it that dirt and grime that really needs to be in something like this that looks very customized. So I feel like they took a ship that 
didn't really look Star Wars-ish to me and they brought it into the Star Wars universe with this release, which I think is very, very cool. Beyond being able to angle the ship in the way that you want to, you also have some other display options to go along with it. First of all, you have the Mandalorian inside of the cockpit. He can be removed or put inside of it depending on how you want it to look. So the cockpit can be open and the interior is fully sculpted out and fully painted. So it has lots of nice rich detail on the inside of there. There was an issue getting Mando into the ship. You have to actually cut the rods that are on the handles themselves is because they get in the way when you're trying to install them. So you can just use some snips and just trim a little bit off the edges and he'll slide right in, no problem. That was a factory defect that they had. The other option that you have is to display it with Grogu in the back or you can use the R5 droid that comes with it, which I'm torn between which one I wanna use. I know when I put this to my kids, they're probably gonna vote Grogu, but I kinda wanna have R5 in there. I think it has, just gives it a different look, you know, which I think is kinda neat. But the only thing that I can say about the ship, this ship is perfect in my opinion. I think it's really cool, very nice display, but the one and only thing that I feel that I wish this ship had was light up features. The LED lights on this ship really bring out the life on it. Those blue lights accent the metals really well and I really wish they were able to figure out how to get it installed on this model. I know it was difficult because it's so small, but still, I feel like that's sorely missing on this one, especially in comparison to the other models that MYC's released. That's my only critique on it, but other than that, I think it's a perfect ship, and if you're a fan of this ship, this is a really good one to have in your collection. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comments below, and until next time, may the force be with you.